Hi and welcome back to Our Mornings. Well, just before we went on the break, I said that I would pick Richard up on his challenges this week with his slimming. So we'll just chat about that very briefly before we go to our viewer topic. But Richard, do you have any thoughts to add to your funny video blog that we should <laughs> <laughs> we play just before the break? Well, there, there are quite a lot of a number of presenters actually doing a diet this month, the month of February. It's uh, Leslie's idea. And uh, actually, tom uh, yes, tomorrow morning, Leslie will be on tomorrow morning talking about all the various presenters and how they're getting on with the darts. I haven't done very well this week, as you can see, because I had a friend <laughs> round on Saturday and he loves scones and jam, so I had to have scones and jam with me. That completely messed the whole thing up. But actually, um, normally, if you, I actually go to Slimming World, uh, and they say, only wear yourself once a week. Actually, I think that article's right. I think it's a good idea to wear yourself every day because then if you're going off track, you find out about it yeah. quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have that problem, do you, Birgit? <laughs> well, I just think it's so great to hear week by week how it's going. And I completely relate to that. You know, when you have friends come over, you see you're prioritising your friends and people above oh, your diet. No, so it's, that's a good thing. I don't know if you knew, but um, uh, actually uh, on Friday, normally hard on Howard and Leslie on Friday talk about this thing, but, but for whatever reason, Leslie can't do it on Friday, so she's going to be doing it tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And a lot of the presenters are actually doing a total juice fast. That is, they're just, got, they're just juicing and just drinking juice and no uh, food at all for a month. I think that's incredibly brave. I, I wouldn't have the courage to do that. There you are. Yeah, well, that's brilliant. So thank you for our update, and I will be asking you again next week. Oh, my word. <laughs> might be the week after. Yeah. Um, but now we are going to head to our viewer discussion. And as I mentioned in the first half, the focus of our discussion today is on the God's supernatural design of the human body. And you may be very familiar with Psalm 139 verse 14 that says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so that's what we're basing our question on this morning. How are we fearfully and wonderfully made? And we would love to hear from you if you are someone who actually, um, you're in awe of the human body and how God's designed it. Maybe as I mentioned in the first half, you're someone who has a real love of science and the natural world, and it's really through um, things such as the design of the human body that you've actually come to um, be interested in a designer and come to know God through that way. Um, it would be really interesting to hear your experience of um, that's you. Um, if you have any questions about the human body systems and also your response to one Psalm 139 verse 14, it would be great to hear your emails and comments and prayer requests, which I'm going to be reading out in this half as well. But to set the scene, we have this amazing video to go to. It's a devotional video and, and it gives amazing and extraordinary facts about the human body, um, which really, really support the idea that um, we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God.
Hi there. Well, a great way to begin our discussion on God's supernatural design of our bodies and how we truly are fearfully and wonderfully made. Some amazing facts there. And I'm very thankful that we have an expert in the studio today, which is Richard, who is a specialist in this whole area of the human body systems. And Richard's actually going to be talking to us this half, just really giving us insights about the human cells, about DNA, about different bodily systems. Um, he has a number of graphics that he's going to be talking us through. So we're going to learn a lot. Um, Richard, it's just really helpful that you're able to share on this topic this morning. And mm. I know that you're going to begin by showing some pictures about the miraculous human body, the human cells, DNA. So over to you. <laughs> right. Well, you know, everyone says, well, I wish I could see a miracle. How many times have you heard that, Bergie? I wish I could see a miracle. <laughs> well, the thing is, we're all miracles. We're all of us miracles, truly. Uh, we're actually all when we were conceived in our mother's womb, well, there was the original body, but uh, when we were conceived in our mother's womb, we were the size of a grain of sand, and we grew into that because of our DNA. Let's look at the next picture. You see, uh, there's a full-grown adult doing gymnastics, and this walking, talking, thinking, breathing, um, this, this body can move around in time and space, and it's just in the most amazing, fantastic machine, which no human could have possibly make. Let's look at the next picture. Uh, I, see, we're all made of 100 trillion cells, and those cells, um, they're all different. All the 100 trillion cells, they're all different, every single one of them, uh, because they've got a design inside them called uh, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, which I think might be on the next picture. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we are. There's the famous right-handed helix of DNA. Now, that is a uh, genetic code designed by God. We all have this genetic code in our, in our 100 trillion cells, and every, every genetic code in every single cell is different for all of us. And There are probably around about 7 billion people on planet Earth, and every single cell has a completely different genetic code. And there is DNA stretched out uh, to about 6 feet. Um, and it's just the most complicated, extraordinary code. And I'd like just to talk a little bit about DNA, if you come back to me. Um, DNA was discovered in 1953, and the two gentlemen discovered it, got Nobel Prizes. They just discovered it. Actually, God created it. Um, you, there's a thing called switching theory in mathematics, which I won't go into right now, but you can show that DNA, there's no chance whatever that it could have happened by chance. Just not possible. Um, it's unbelievably complex. Um, and what it is is a storage uh, medium of um, data. And to give you an example, if you can imagine uh, that little, my, finger, my little finger is a pinhead, it's not, but you can imagine it was, and if you could imagine something else which is impossible, to get a tiny, tiny amount of DNA on a pinhead, of, on a pinhead do you know that that tiny pinhead of DNA can have all the information for all the animals, birds, reptiles, mammals, fish, amphibians, uh, human beings that have ever been created, plus all the books that have ever been written, plus all the thoughts of mankind that have ever been thought and ever will be thought, and it would hardly get started on the genetic uh, ability to encode all that amazing information. That is the most complex connect code in the universe. Our, d our DNA is much, much more complicated than all these sophisticated computers we use. In NASA, they have NASA supercomputers. And a pinhead of DNA, uh, if you had a whole Earth, if you filled the whole of planet Earth with NASA supercomputers, it wouldn't come near the storage capacity of a pinhead of DNA. It's amazing. It is totally mind-blowing. Richard, I mean, what a wonderful way to begin this discussion because it really does help us to begin to focus in on how incredibly intricate and sophisticated the aspects of, of the human body are. Hmm. So the way you began with the human cell and you looked at the different components of a single cell, what actually is, is part of a cell with the nucleus, the membrane, hmm. all of the aspects there, and then what you described about DNA, hmm. it's just, it is absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. And it really, I think the, the key thing in all of this is that we are really focusing on the wonder of the body systems, the mm. body's design, but we're focusing on that for a reason, and that is that through this, we'll actually direct our hearts and worship to the one who created us mm. with this incredible mm. design. It points mm. us to, to God and mm. to mm. being awestruck and full of wonder towards God for what he's done, and more than that, actually to respond with a desire to be faithful to him and stewarding these bodies, mm. these mm. amazing bodies mm. that he's given us. So mm. Richard, just to carry on with 
with the discussion. Can I ask you then, yeah. because we're going to focus mm. particularly on the human body systems. Now, yeah. I'm just trying to remember, are there 12 bodily, uh, main body systems? Well, actually, me in medical school, we're taught there are 11. 11, okay. But, but no, uh, we did talk about one before, and you said quite correctly, uh, there are 11. But actually, uh, we know through biochemistry, um, and other things. Biochemistry, for example, we all have a particular pH, that's the acidity of our body, a particular oxygen content, a particular blood sugar, a particular CO2, and all sorts of other variables. And these are all different biochemical systems. I mean, we're used to talking about the, the systems which we know about, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, the neurological system, the gastroenterology system, all the rest of it. They're the obvious things, but there are masses and masses and masses of biochemical systems um, which are happening all the time, and we take for granted, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, we, we know, um, or I am aware of two or three hundred systems, but I, my, I, I suspect that there are thousands and thousands mm. and thousands of different systems. Well, it's really interesting that you've already cited a few there. So the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, yeah. the immune system, the reproductive system, yeah. the endocrine system. Sure. Um, I mean, there are Perhaps we, well, I'll hand it over to you, Richard, because you're going to talk to us about, can you talk us through some of these systems and how amazing each one is? Well, I will. What I thought I'd simply do is just, just take uh, four pictures at a time. I don't know what's going to come up next, but I want to go through them quickly simply because of time. So let's look at the next picture and we'll see what it is. Uh, well, that's a, now that's a, those are brain cells. Uh, they're just amazing. Um, you know, our human brain is a supercomputer. It's absolutely fantastic the way it processes information. Each one cell uh, is connected to 10,000 other cells. And electrical impulses go from one cell called a neuron to another cell at 250 miles an hour. And that's why, for example, if you burn your finger on, the, on hot iron or something, you have moved your finger away from the hot iron before you've even thought about it because you're your uh, nervous system works so quickly to protect you. There is your skeleton. Um, now you've got, you've got your rib cage there, which is protective. It's protecting your thoracic, uh, your, the organs within your thoracic cage, your lungs, your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, heart. And then another very p important, your skull, which is protecting the, the supercomputer inside the skull, which weighs about three pounds, which, which is the most super fantastic computer in the universe, the human brain. And then, oh, please go back just a second. Um, I want you to have a look at the shoulder there. We just think that's a shoulder. Well, I, know, I want to tell you now, bones are actually three times as strong as uh, wood, but um, nearly, virtually identical amount of strength as steel, but only a third of the weight. Now, if you asked a mechanical engineer to lift, I don't know if you can see on the right, the, uh, his right arm is sort of hanging down, and the question to the mechanical engineer is, can you please arrange a system to... Uh, do two things, lift that right arm so it's actually moving out like the left arm, but also at the same time, could you please carry half your body weight at the same time? Now, you would actually, if you asked a mechanical engineer to do that, they, would, they, they could get the, they could put some um, uh, sort of lifting sh uh, shackle onto it so they could lift the arm up, but what they couldn't do is lift half the body weight. In fact, there are quite a lot of um, athletes. In fact, my daughter was a gymnast, and she, could, she used to climb up trees when she was four, and she'd happily hang and swing around from on one, one uh, branch from one arm for about half, for, you know, minutes at a time, <laughs> hang, hang a whole body weight on it. Now, what, see, if you ask a mechanical engineer what to do, they would build uh, a great sort of pyramid of steel above that as a, as a, as a fulcrum to pull on. Do you see what I mean? Um, so the whole thing is a miracle of design. It couldn't possibly have happened by chance. It's a miracle of design. Let's see what the next picture is. Um, now, there's, you see, we have 600 muscles. With each cell, there's a system called the Krebs cycle, which is to produce energy. We have a system called an uh, energy system called the Krebs cycle. And the reason that you can sit in your chair and I can sit in my chair is because the Krebs cycle is working all the, all the time, converting ADP, which is low energy molecules, into high energy ATP, which is a high energy molecule. And those muscles relax and contract about a, about a thousand times a second. And we've got uh, 600 muscles. Um, and we take it all very much for granted. And they're very, very powerful, but also very intricate. For example, you can write 
using your, your fingers, you can write your, you can sign your name. And that's very, very delicate. And yet you can, you can lift half your body weight with your right hand. It's amazing, isn't it? Next one. I think that'll be the last one before we have a little chat about it. Um, do we have another one? There we go. That's the cardiovascular system. Um, and uh, the cardiovascular, we have about 10 pints of blood. Um, and the function of the blood is to carry hemoglobin around the, the body. Our body needs oxygen, and there's this amazing molecule called hemoglobin, which we take for granted. It's red-coloured, uh, but it's got iron in the middle of it. Iron is a very important part of hemoglobin, but I tell you, iron is toxic to the body. Um, in the old days, people used to die of iron toxicity with their pot, pots and pans made of iron. Uh, but God, God is well aware that uh, iron is toxic for us, but he has incorporated the iron in the hemoglobin molecule in such a way that it's not toxic to us. So we have this amazing um, 60,000 miles of um, cardiovascular system of arteries, veins, capillaries, and everything else, pumping this oxygen around the body, taking with it nutrients, oxygen, and taking away carbon dioxide and waste products to the liver. The whole thing's absolutely stunning, Birgit. Yeah. <laughs> let's come, let's just let's see what Birgit has to think about it now. Well, Richard, I mean, I just have to say, firstly, your knowledge is so vast, and it's actually such a blessing to the body of Christ that you can actually give these insights um, to do with these topics. So thank you so much for that. But truly, as we begin to look at those three systems in themselves, the skeletal system, the muscular system, and the cardiovascular system, to me, I'm not just awestruck by what you were sharing, different sort of facts, like, for example, when you said that the human bone has the strength of steel, but yeah. it's actually so much lighter for us to be mobile. Yeah. Um, but not just astounded at facts like that, but also the interplay between these systems, how sophisticated they are. I mean, we are, when you begin to really just meditate on, on each aspect, you do see that we are actually walking miracles. I mean, we it's are. an absolute wonder what God has done in our design. It's stunning. It's yeah. absolutely stunning. We, we do so much take our bodies for granted. And by the way, I'd love to hear you talk about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit. Why don't you just talk about that for a second? Well... Yeah, I mean, this is this is an amazing thought that God has actually created our physical bodies, and it does mean that as we focus in on this, that we can actually be awestruck by God's design as we're doing. But actually, God does speak about um, the truest purpose of our bodies, which is to be, as you say, a temple to house the very Spirit of God. We touched on this verse last week in the Gospel of John, yeah. that Jesus actually said that the triune God actually comes to reside in our own spirits, that mm. when we receive what Jesus did for us on the cross, mm. we receive his Holy Spirit, and then our spirits yeah. become born again and alive yeah. to God. Yeah. Jesus actually promises that the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit will come and abide on the inside of us. Yeah. And in that way, as you've just pointed out, we become temples for God's spirit. Yeah. We actually become his children. And yeah. scripture says that it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Um, and so then our bodies, um, that becomes our, our truest purpose, that, that our yeah. physical bodies yeah. are the way that we actually serve God's purposes through his indwelling spirit in and, in, in and through us. And we become God's children and his instruments in the inauguration of his kingdom on earth um, before the second coming of Christ. So wow. um, that is, Isn't yeah, that we wonderful? are the temples wonderful. of his spirit. So wonderful. we're in awe of our physical bodies, but yeah. also the purpose. But Richard, I just wonder if before we return to our discussion, yeah. um, just to introduce this devotional video and it is so inspiring. Some of you may have heard of the of Pastor Louis Giglio and he is actually speaking in this video about um, the intricacy of our design and the intimacy with which God knows us um, in his design of us. He shares amazing facts um, about the human cells, about our development in the womb, about DNA, about the bodily systems, all for the reason of pointing us towards God and communicating the fact that each one of us has been so deliberately and purposefully designed we were thought of in the mind of God before our existence. And as we meditate on these amazing facts about our body, it's always to that end that God was so purposeful in his fashioning of us. So we're going to go to this devotional video now and we'll be back with you after that. The miracle of tonight is, is crazy and crazier to me than the size of any star. Is that though we are but a vapor, you and me, and tiny and frail, 
we are marked by majesty and we have been created in the very image of the God who breathes out the stars and put the universe into place you and I are fashioned and formed and ordained by the God of all creation we are fearfully and wonderfully made you and I you are somebody incredibly special let me just dial back to the beginning, and I, I know you know this already, but in the very, very beginning, here's how you happened, okay? One cell from your mom found one cell from your dad. Now, there's more involved in that than that, but that's enough for us right now. And by the way, we should applaud the one cell from your dad because that one cell did a pretty heroic thing to be the one cell in the story that we're talking about tonight. One cell from your mom met up with one cell from your dad each one carrying 23 chromosomes the one from your mom was carrying half of her dna the one from your dad was carrying half of his dna and those two cells met and merged into one single cell and when they did those chromosomes matched and they began to form together a brand new dna code using four characters four nucleotides they begin to write out what we have now discovered is the three billion character description of who you are written in the language of God. They wrote out your DNA, your human genome of three billion characters made up of those four simple nucleotides. And when they did, they described who God had ordained you to be. In that one little simple cell, Scientists say if you took the DNA out of that one little cell and stretched it out, that DNA would be six feet long. Three billion characters stretched out to six feet long. So amazing that if I were to read your DNA, reading one character per second, night and day, it would take me 96 years just to read the description of you. And when they formed together, they wrote out and painted a picture which had never been written before in the history of humankind. And then that cell did the unthinkable. It set out to build that model from one cell. I'm telling you, you are a miracle sitting in this building tonight. And you have come a long, long way. I mean, here you are, this may not be in the family photo album, but here you are at three days old. Sixteen cells of you. You say, what in the world is that? It's a sixteen cell human embryo on the tip of a safety pin at incredible magnification. So by now that one cell had turned into 16 cells on its way to making the 75 trillion cells that make up your body tonight. Every one of those 75 trillion cells containing that six feet of the three billion character DNA code that you. There's so much DNA in your body, by the way. If you stretched it all end to end, there'd be enough DNA to go to the moon and back inside your body. 178,000 times. That's how amazing God has made you to be. 75 trillion cells in your body. And when I told you that, 50,000 of those cells died and were replaced by brand new cells when I told you that. And then just now, 50,000 more cells died and were replaced by brand new cells. It's happening every three seconds, day and night, all the days of your existence. And you wonder why you're tired all the time. I'll tell you, you're doing some amazing stuff night and day. We're miracles, you and me. I love the way Augustine said it. One of the great fathers of the church and of the faith. He just nailed it when he said it like this. Men go abroad to wonder at the height of mountains, the huge waves of the sea, the long course of rivers, the vast compass of the ocean, the circular motion of the stars, but they pass by themselves and they don't even notice. In the womb, miracles happening. 
every moment. Here you are at five months in the womb. You remember those days, those were the good old days. <laughs> and just miracles happening every second. Let me tell you about one. Million optic nerve endings left the optic nerve center of your brain in the womb, headed for a million optic nerves that had left your eye. And they had to meet and match their exact partner. One million looking for one million. And when they found their exact partner out of a million and matched up together, in that instant you had sight. And anyone would tell you that to this moment the most technologically advanced thing on planet Earth is your eye. Oh, but it didn't do you any good because when that moment happened, you just had one piece of skin completely covering your eyeball. But as I read in one textbook, miraculously and mysteriously at about the sixth month, a little cutting device appeared and it cut perfectly that piece of skin. And you had eyelids for the very first time in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and the God of the heavens is the one who fashioned you together and he knows your name tonight and he knows every single thing there is to know about you and he's made you a promise that for those who trust in him, he will literally hold them in his hand and carry them all the days of their life. Welcome back to our mornings. Well, such an inspiring message by Pastor Giglio there that the God of the universe was so purposeful in our creation and the wonder of our creation and that he holds us in his hands. It's just such an inspiring, encouraging talk that he gave just there. So we hope that that was a blessing to you. And we've received so many messages and prayer requests this morning. So I'll just spend a few moments reading some of those um, before Richard goes on with his wonderful explanation of our body systems. So um, the first prayer request that we have received is from Wendy who says morning to you both please pray for healing for Jason who has MS he's what doctors say at the end stages but keeps them on their toes and proving them wrong and is still alive and kicking two years on we give the glory to God for this please pray for him to continue to fight this awful disease it's affecting his front lobes now and making him think um, things that that are awful and um, that People are going to harm him. Please pray for healing in Jesus' name. God bless you from Wendy. Wendy, thank you so much for sharing about Jason. And we would be um, honored to pray for Jason um, a little bit later in the program. Thank you for emailing in this morning. Um, We've received a text from Susan who says, please pray for complete healing for my sister Jean, who has been diagnosed with a terrible condition of progressive palsy. Susan, we will, um, we will certainly pray for Jean about this as well. Thank you for your text this morning. Um, a message from Anonymous, my son Andrew um, died, in a fu died and his funeral was last Thursday. He seemed so unhappy and lost um, and tired of pain and being lonely. He was born again though, I, he was born again though and I cling to him being with the Lord, but he was so frightened he just kept to himself. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear of your loss um, and your son Andrew and um, it's just encouraging you mention that he was born again, that you cling to this hope of him being with the Lord. Um, we will we'll pray for you as well in your loss and your grief, and we're just so sorry to hear that you've had that experience of losing your son. Thank you for um, texting us this morning on the program. Um, so a message from Jean, and Jean says, Good morning, folks. Um, good to see you both. Can I ask you to pray for my son, Gary? He's feeling very down as he split up with his girlfriend at the new year. I pray he'll meet a Christian girl who will lead him to Christ. I would also like prayer as I'm going through the menopause and have dreadful symptoms. Thank you both so much. Jean, we'll certainly pray um, both for your son, Gary, and also for this, the horrible symptoms that you're suffering from at the moment. Thank you for your message this morning. Um, I've, I think I've 
read a couple of these, so I will just keep skipping forward. Um, so a question here. Hi folks, back in the 60s I was visiting my aunt in her convent. While I was there I witnessed a nun walk through a solid closed door. Was this nun demonic? And that's from KB in England. Now that's a quite a difficult question to answer, Richard. It might be putting you on the spot, but what would be your initial thoughts to that? Well, <clears throat> I, don't, I, I don't really have opinions. I'm just interested in what the Bible has to say. The Bible says there is, that there is no such thing as ghosts. Um, so whenever we see these spiritual manifestations, we have to think in terms of um, angels or demons. Um, I don't know, because of the circumstance, I, I wouldn't like to say which it was, but I, th I think it would have to be an angel or a demon. Um, I don't know which of, which of those it would be, but it w the, the, the Bible doesn't talk about ghosts in that way. Thank you so much for your mm. response to that, Richard. And just to um, carry on with another response to this topic of um, the question of ghosts from Michael O'Brien um, in the Republic of Ireland. Michael, it's lovely to hear from you. Michael says, good morning, dear Birgit and dear Dr. Richard. How lovely to see you again. I've not seen you for some time due to my own personal need for seclusion at times, according to my nature, but I'm always most consoled to reconnect with the Revelation family. Well, a very warm welcome back to you, Michael. It's lovely to know that you're joining us again. Um, and you say, on the subject of poltergeist activity, well, I dare say I'm somewhat of an expert in this field. Oh, well, that's really helpful. <laughs> Firstly, Poltergeist in German translation means noisy ghost. So Bergen and Richard, let me first say poltergeists are very real. I myself um, have had a stone thrown at me by a poltergeist in my own garden in the dead of night. Yes, my house is very old and ancient and my family is also very um, ancient, um, some may say. Uh, sorry, it's running together a bit, um, haunted, but the poltergeist that threw a stone at me was not a spirit known to my family, and so I was very annoyed by this poltergeist. Um, I was also tormented by poltergeists as a child, and in my teenage years, it's very complicated, Bergen and Richard, as I lived in a, success in a, in a succession of haunted homes as a child. Um, yes, I was privileged and surrounded by beautiful mansions and great wealth, but the ghosts also followed and even appeared to me. So Bergen and Richard, I shall cut a long story short, let no one under estimate poltergeists or ghosts as they are very real but do not be afraid the Lord Jesus protects us and his holy angels so that was Michael's experience thank you for sharing your testimony Michael it's always mm. encouraging to get feedback on these different topics mm. um, and we're just aware that the Lord uses these to encourage and to speak to um, other people in the church without walls other viewers so thank you very much Michael for your input this morning that's wonderful well Richard before we return to more messages and prayer requests we'll carry on a little with a little bit more about our discussion because mm. you were just beginning to explain some of the body symptom uh, the systems so, hmm. could I pick you up and ask you to carry on with the discussion? I will, uh, but before I do anything else, uh, that, that video, you, you chose a brilliant video. And the point he was making is that 23 chromosomes from mum come together with 23 chromosomes from dad, and they form, uh, you know, the chromosome, the unit, which is actually called a genome. So if you'd just like to have a look at Birgit just for a second, <laughs> just uh, take the camera off me and put it on Birgit just for a second, and I want to ask the viewers, what do you see? Well, I'll tell you what you see. is something that God created, which is very, very beautiful. Now, if you just come back to me. <laughs> you see, um, Bir Birgit is, looks the way she is because she has DNA. She has a design genetic code with all her 100 trillion cells. It may be less in Birgit's case because she's smaller. But in all her cells, which uh, produce the color of her hair, the, the, her eyes, her nose, and all beautifully pro proportioned, because they're all, by the way, in the golden ratio or the divine ratio. I've spoken about that before. But the thing is that all of Birgit's anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry is, was all there right at the very first cell, the, grain of a, the, the size of a grain of sand. And now, uh, um, th that little tiny cell, the size of a grain of sand, grew in her mother's womb to a little baby, and now it's grown to a full, uh, a full grown adult. Me, Birgit, you, and all the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And it is a complete mind blowing miracle. But anyway, Birgit asked me to look at the various systems, so let's go to, I don't know what the next picture is, but let's have a look at it. Well, that is the nervous system, which is just amazing. It's, uh, it's far, more, far, far more complicated than any computer 
computers made anywhere on planet Earth. The, the brain at the top there in pink, in, in coast, encased in, in skull, in case it gets damaged, um, it, it uses 20% of the energy produced by the body. Um, and it uses energy so fast that if you deprive the brain of oxygen or sugar, it is unconscious within four seconds. And it passes the information backwards and forwards to the body at 250 miles an hour. Next one. Next picture. Now that is, is a, a, a one cubic centimeter of human skin. And I'm going to tell you what's in there. There are four yards of nerve fibers, 600 pain sensors, 1,300 nerve cells, 900 nerve endings, 36 heat sensors, 76 pressure sensors, 100 sweat glands, 3 million cells, and 3 yards of blood vessels. And that's just in one centimeter of skin. The skin if you come back to me, the skin is the largest organ in the body. And by the way, it, it produces uh, antiseptic and antibiotics all the time. If, we, if it didn't, we'd all walk around and we would be green in colour <laughs> because we'd be covered in fungi. We would. Uh, your, 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 the first line of defence is your skin because the whole of the, the air you breathe is all full of bugs, bacteria, viruses, fungi, all, everything. And your, we were in contact with a, a very toxic environment, but for the most part of it, we don't grow fungus on our skin because God has provided the necessary. Let's have a look at the next one, see where we go to. I think what I'll do is quickly finish the pictures and then get back to work. We have a most amazing immune system which keeps us free of all the bugs. We could spend a whole program just talking about the immune system. The next one. Uh, that is our digestive system. And, you know, food moves from the, uh, from the, through the digestive system and using a thing called peri uh, peristalsis. You could be upside down and swallow a cup of coffee. That's extraordinary, actually. Uh, we can't actually create a, a human machine that, uh, easily that would do that. Um, and if you swallow a fly, it's not going to kill you because the pH in your stomach is 2. It's the same as battery acid. It'll kill all the bugs on a fly dead instantly. Next one. Uh, there's our respiratory system, and let me tell you, the respiratory system, the, the lungs have a surface area about the size of a tennis court. And all those little sacs on the right are called alveoli, and they actually have God's fairy liquid in them. If, uh, they have a, th a surfactant in them so that they don't collapse. Um, the, the purpose of those alveo alveoli is to take oxygen out of the air and put the toxic carbon dioxide into the air that we breathe in there. But the point is it's like a giant sponge and it would collapse on itself if it wasn't for God's fairy liquid called a surfactant. Do you think that happened by chance? Well, I don't. I just think it's just a miracle. Next one quick. Uh, next one for me. Um, that's the liver. Now, the liver does 500 different biochemical processes we know about. It also breaks, um, it makes blood and, and breaks down all sorts of drugs which we take and, and, and different foodstuffs. It, it, it is amazing, uh, total, it's totally amazing, the liver. Actually, uh, doctors don't really understand the liver properly. Next one. There's your kidneys and the urinary system. And the ur basically, your kidneys just filter all your blood to take out all the nasty toxins and um, and keep the pH of your, and the blood sugar all the same in your in your blood. Next one. Um, and the th um, just to finish, just to remind you that we reproduce. This uh, fantastic um, human body reproduces. There isn't a machine I know of on planet Earth that reproduces, but the human body does. It's amazing. It's mind-blowing. And I haven't even started, actually. Well, I mean, <laughs> Richard, just to say thank you so much. And the thing is, you are so encouraging of me and all of us on, on the team. And just to encourage you, because you have so much knowledge, a wealth of knowledge, and it is just so helpful <laughs> to begin to have some insight into these systems in the body. You are, it's just so encouraging to hear <laughs> your description. So thank you so much. Um, mm. And just to offer a devotional thought before we yes. return to our emails and prayer requests, um, this is a really amazing passage which I came across in a book called Trusting God by Jerry Bridges and there's a chapter in it about trusting God for our creation or um, our personality and our physical um, our bodies and this is a very encouraging devotional thought that's related and it, it's by Reverend James um, Huffstetler and he said you are the result of the attentive careful thoughtful intimate detailed creative work of God your personality, your sex, your height, your features are what they are because God made them precisely that way. He made you the way he did because that is the way he wants you to be. 
If God had wanted you to be basically or creatively different, he would have made you differently. Your genes and chromosomes are creaturely distinctives. Even the shape of your nose and ears are what they are by God's design. So as we really begin to focus on that thought that we are fashioned so deliberately by God because that's how he wanted us to be, we can actually have such um, rest in that knowledge, such security and thankfulness to God that he is so purposeful in his design um, and in the detail of every aspect of who we are in our temperaments, our personalities and in our physical bodies. So um, I hope that was an encouraging passage to read. And just to read a few more of the uh, messages that have come in um, related to the human body and also the stories in the first half. Um, let me just see if I can pick this up um, with a text from, uh, this is anonymous, it says, hi, praise the Lord, can you pray for me and my family? Um, Rajesh Paul from Birmingham and my wife Pinda Kaur and two sons Ryan and Darren. We would be really happy to pray for you and your family as the program goes on. Thank you for your text message. Uh, and from Patricia, good morning, Richard and Birgit. We call these spiritual entities which manifest to the living, ghosts, poltergeists, dark and light mists, spirits, visions, demons, wind gusts, and at times freezing cold manifestations, etc. They do definitely exist because I've seen and experienced all except the dark mist. Some of these apparitions were very frightening and others made me curious and stupefied me, whereas others left me awestruck to this day. I cannot make head or tail of those experiences except to say that I'm a Roman Catholic and believe in the Holy Trinity and God. I've never dabbled in the paranormal as we're not allowed to do so from Patricia. It's just really wonderful to hear people's testimonies and experiences as, related, as they relate to these stories from the papers that we've picked up on. So Patricia, thank you so much for sharing your experience this morning. Um, <clears throat> Someone who is talking about um, the story on weighing ourselves as, as a way to <laughs> m motivate ourselves with diets. But this person's saying, um, if you weigh yourself, you'll become discouraged. And they suggest, instead, they suggest instead putting on some clothes and if they've become tight, um, to see about ways that they can become looser again. So that's another way that we can gauge that yes. through the, the tightness of our, our clothes. Yeah. Um, so another message about the paranormal. Hello, there are two types of ghosts, the spirit type, which we believe are demonic, um, not the return of the once living people. The other is the recording type, where an event is somehow supernaturally recorded into the fabric of the building and plays back now and again, so that the ghosts seen are not actually spirits of any kind. And that's from Tony. Again, just wonderful to have input, different perspectives coming in on these stories this morning. Thank you, Tony, for your email. Um, and we have received a message from Dawn. Dawn, always lovely to hear from you. You say here, Dear Richard and Birgit, may I ask for prayer for reconciliation for my husband, Mike, and his family as they get ready for their mum's funeral service tomorrow, as Mike's non-Christian sister, Deborah, uh, and his niece, Lisa, both are putting pressure on Mike for a song um, about a pagan god, uh, which is something about goodness that's deserved. Um, and Dawn talks more about the funeral tomorrow. We'll certainly pray for reconciliation at this um, really sensitive time of your uh, of Mike's mother's funeral. Dawn, we'll lift that in our prayer time coming up very soon. Thank you for your message this morning. We've received a number of messages, so just to read a few more. Um, this is from Jeff. Thanks, Berger and Richard. You both radiate the very goodness of God. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks, God bless from Jeff. Jeff, what a blessing of encouragement. Thank you so much. <laughs> And Richard, you have a lovely message of encouragement here from Reverend Myra. It's really lovely that the viewers are encouraging you because you really do just add so much to these discussions. And Re um, Reverend Myra says, Hello, my Darios. Everyone has a mouth that can smile, and Richard Kent has a face that can smile. <laughs> Wonderful smile. Um, and she says, Looking back, I can see how I have abused my body, mainly by eating too much and of the wrong things. At 78, I'm now trying to lose weight to change my eating habits. I've got to the stage, including a fall lot last October, where I'm walking on two sticks and have arthritis in one shoulder and arm. Um, so I am not only trying to cut the wrong things out of my eating, but trying to exercise. Our bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit. Do you think I've left it too late? And then um, Myra gives some wonderful encouragement about your program, Richard, um, 
on, now she's saying this, this, it was too short, it was on miracles that have occurred through the Bible. Let us have a full hour, or perhaps a series. Um, he's a great pres- presenter, and I'm locked on every knowledgeable word. <laughs> so that's really encouraging. That's lovely. Love and thanksgiving. But Richard, perhaps you could answer Myra's question there. She says, do you think she's left it too late as her body being the temple of the Holy Spirit? No, absolutely not. No, no, no. Anybody. But, you know, most, uh, well, a third of the people in the United Kingdom are obese. It's not just overweight, they're obese. Um, have a body mass index greater than one, greater than 30, sorry. Uh, a normal weight is uh, 20 to 25, overweight is a BMI 25 to 30, and obese is over 30. If you have a, 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 a body mass index over 30, that's actually very dangerous for your health. It actually can cause heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure, diabetes type 2, and even predisposed to cancer and lots of other things. But we can always lose weight. We can always lose weight whatever age we are. And uh, I've just got, I won't spend very long on this um, because we've got to go back to the prayer time. But what I would say about losing weight is this, is that we don't go on a diet at all. What we do is change our eating habits for the rest of our lives. Now, I did actually lose three stone before the Slimming World. But guess what? I said, well, that's the end of that and I stopped uh, attending and put some of it back on again. Now this time I am not going to put it on again when I've lost it because I'm going to stay with changed eating habits. Won't go through it all again, but it isn't a diet. It isn't a short-term fix. It's changing what you eat for the rest of your life. Richard, thank you so much. And it's really helpful to have your response to Reverend Myra's question there. And it would be really wonderful now to enter a time, enter into a time of prayer yeah. um, for the requests that have come in from viewers. Just one more before our prayer time. It's from Susie. And Susie says, my daughter Chloe is 13 years today. Praise be to God. She has learning needs, but God's goodness is illuminating through her. Please join me in thanking the Lord today and pray that God's plan for her life shall not be abolished. She is fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank Thanks and God bless you all. Susie, thank you for your message and a very happy birthday to Chloe who's 13 today and we would love to pray for Chloe for God's purposes in her life. Thank you for your message. So Richard, please could I ask you, would you be able to begin our time of prayer just drawing us into God's presence and then, yeah. then I'll go through the prayer needs as they've come in. I certainly will. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to say a very short prayer and then I'm going to pass over to Birgit um, who's, who's actually an expert in praying which, and I'll be praying with Birgit. Uh, Loving Father, you just said uh, in uh, Sermon on the Mount, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So we know that, Father, your name is Jehovah Jireh. You will provide for all of our needs. You said in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. He forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Not only that, Lord, you provide for everything. You've given us, uh, we've been talking about the supernatural DNA you gave us when we were in our mother's womb, when we were formed in secret. How you have a plan for our lives, to, that, a, a good plan, a wonderful plan for each one of us. And Father, what we need to, each one of us to do is to, on a daily basis, recommit our lives to you and seek your purposes for our lives. And as we do that, everything that we need will be provided because that's what Jesus said. So I'm going to pass now to Birgit for pray for the individual prayer needs. Father, we just give you thanks, Lord, for this time in your presence this morning. And we give you thanks for this topic of your design of our human bodies and just how absolutely awesome our bodily systems are. Thank you for Richard's prayer and for these people that have written in with these needs, Lord. We just come before your throne of grace, Lord. We We trust in you and in your goodness. And I ask, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit now to touch the hearts and lives of everybody who is watching this program. I just pray that your Spirit would draw hearts to yourself, Lord Jesus, and that people would be blessed in your presence and come to know you as Lord and Savior. And Father, just to lift these particular needs to you from Anonymous, who described her situation of her husband dealing with this cocaine addiction and then um, having an affair and just the breakdown of her family, Lord, and um, the despondency that she feels. Lord, we lift this precious person to you and you know exactly who she is and I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, Lord, who is the comforter, to really minister such comfort to her heart today. Lord, I pray that she would be 
so aware of you with her and that you would begin to work in her situation, Lord, to bring reconciliation according to your will with her husband. I pray that there would just be um, a real turnaround in that, in that situation and also that you would bring him healing, Lord, for this addiction. I pray for reconciliation for this family and more than anything, I just really pray that you would bless this precious woman and just fill her with a sense of your love, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, pray for Jason who has MS. Lord, we just thank you for his life and for all that you are doing through his life. And Lord, we just pray for healing for him in the name of Jesus and in his shed blood. Lord, we pray for healing for Jason and we pray for your continued grace and blessing to be in his life. What a blessing he is, Lord. Would you be with him and his family in Jesus' name? Lord, Susan has asked for healing for Jean from progressive palsy. So Lord, we lift Jean to you and we just pray, Lord, for healing in her life. Would you pour out your spirit upon her? And we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would bring healing and restoration to her body. Lord, to your glory, bless Jean and bless Susan today, Father. Um, we pray, Jean's written in about her son, Gary, the way that Gary has just broken up with his girlfriend. Um, and she would also like prayer for menopause and the symptoms that she is suffering from. So Lord, we, we lift Gary to you. Father, we just pray that your peace would be with him as he's broken up with his girlfriend and dealing with the sadness of that, the loss of that. Would you minister comfort to him? Would you draw his heart to yourself and just bless his life, Father? May your purposes for his life be fulfilled, Lord. And for Jean, who has these symptoms that she's struggling with, with the menopause, Lord, would you lift those sy symptoms and would you give her grace? Lord, we just really pray that you would hold her um, in your arms, Lord, and that you would just bless her life in Jesus' name. Um, Rosemary for kidney disease. Father, we just pray healing in Jesus' name for Rosemary. Lord, you know this precious woman, and Lord, we lift her to you, and in your name, Lord, we pray this healing for her. And for this person who's written in about his wife, protection as she goes to Nigeria and peace. Lord Jesus, would you go before this woman? Father, would your peace be with her and in her heart as she prepares to go? Um, in every way, would you work in these details? Would you be with her? Would you, Lord, we trust in your word, Psalm 91, which says that you give your angels charge over us, that your spirit is with us. So we do pray protection over this woman as she goes um, on this trip, Lord Jesus. Um, for Rajesh, who's written in for prayer for his wife, Pinda, and sons, Ryan and Darren. Lord, thank you so much for Rajesh and his faith in you and his desire for his family to be blessed. We lift each of these precious people to you and we pray the fullness of your spirit and blessing to be with them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, for Dawn, who has asked for prayer, for reconciliation um, for Mike and his family as they, pr as they prepare for Mike's mum's funeral. Lord, um, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be poured out over this family. Thank you so much for Dawn and the blessing she is. And Father, we lift Mike to you. And I just pray that your peace would be with him, particularly as they're sorting through these details of planning the funeral, the song that's been requested, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would bring peace amongst these family members, that you would bring a harmony and make the way forward, that you would give Mike wisdom and that you would just really move powerfully amongst this family. I just pray your blessing over the funeral service and that you would draw the hearts of this family to yourself. And Lord, lastly for Chloe, who is 13 years old today, um, and Chloe's mum's asked for your plan for her life. Lord, bless Chloe. Bless this girl, Lord, who's having her birthday today. We thank you for her life, and we lift her to you, and we pray, Lord, for your goodness and mercy to be with her always. We pray for your perfect and good plans to be outworked in her life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we love you so much. And I just pray for all viewers watching and for us um, on, on the team here, Lord. May we just be open and responsive to your Holy Spirit today. May you draw us close to yourself. And may we love and honor and serve you with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. So um, in, the in the remaining minute, um, Richard, I would love to ask for your closing thoughts, scripture verses on the human body, just to end our discussion this, this morning. Well, just two very two things. Um, if you'd like to contact Birgit or myself, uh, we can get us on Facebook and also write to To The Point at Revelation TV. And here's a closing scripture about the magnificence of God. It's <laughs> Isaiah uh, 40, verse 28. 
Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. His understanding is unsearchable. I tell you what, the human body is so profound, so amazing, so fantastic. You don't have to look for any miracles. You are a miracle. And one more thought, your DNA doesn't die with you. You can have a new DNA, a resurrection body, and a new body is going to be even better than the present one. Richard, thank <laughs> you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge on this topic of God's supernatural design of our bodies. We hope the discussion has really been an encouragement and really informative to you this morning. We really look forward to joining you again next week. And in the meantime, may God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye.